Okay, so in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how I create insane looking AI product mockups when combining either ChatGPT or Midjourney with Photoshop. By the end of this video, you'll be able to prompt like a creative director, generate your own product mockups in Midjourney or ChatGPT, use ChatGPT to layer in AI generated illustrations, and then bring it to life with your very own brand using Adobe Photoshop. I'll also break down the three types of mockups that I've personally been creating. And if you're interested, I'll also leave a link in the description so you can get the exact frameworks and skip the guesswork and start creating prompts today. So let's jump into it. So I split my AI mockups into three different categories. First, we have product photography. These tend to be high-end editorial style images that feel real enough to be able to sell. Then we have illustration layers, graffiti overlays, line art, marker style graphics. These add brand personality. And finally, we have sellable mock-up templates. Now, I don't personally sell these. However, when you follow the steps that I'm about to show you, there is absolutely no reason why you can't sell them as PSD files. Now, I'm gonna let you in on some top secret stuff. On my website, I've been selling this framework and people have been going absolutely crazy for it. And the reason they're going crazy for it is because I've made it so simple to be able to create any photography shot that you like. I've even included a bunch of words that you can literally plug in. Now, I'm gonna share with you the base prompt, which I genuinely haven't shared anywhere online yet. And that is a photorealistic close-up of the the character's pose or gesture, holding whatever blank product that you're selling, featuring any details or textures on the mock-up. The subject is captured with whatever camera that you can think of at whatever angle. The scene includes go crazy on the motion here and also the light. Just simply describe what you imagine the background to look like and what lighting and color style you think would be appropriate here. Describe the atmosphere and finally any other textures or details that you'd like to see on the picture. Go and give this a go in mid-journey and if you're still struggling to get the results and you want the full prompt pack with modular slots and examples, then you can grab that in the link in the description. Now before I show you an example, let's talk about the elephant in the room. Should you use ChatGPT? or should you also invest your money into Midjourney? I'll put a few comparisons up so you can decide on the screen. Midjourney is like being the creative director. You set the tone, the styling, the photography brief, and it genuinely gives you phenomenal results that are really hard to tell if it's 20,000 pound photography or shot by AI. Now ChatGPT on the other hand, less creative, but the results can be still as effective. The benefit is that you can keep talking to it as you would a photographer continuously until your idea is refined. Now let me show you a real example using the product framework. We've got a photorealistic close-up of a screaming face and veiny hand holding a blank black protein scoop tub covered in chalk dust and sweat. The subject has bandaged wrists and a gym strap captured with a wide angle lens from a low aggressive angle. The scene includes airborne chalk particles, motion drag and heavy overhead lighting. The background is a gym wall, lit with cold LEDs and harsh spotlight. The atmosphere is intense and savage with aggressive grain and bloom distortion. And here's what it came out like. Now we can actually take this image and take it further. Using ChatGPT, I asked it to do the following. Add bold graffiti inspired by line illustrations to overlay this image. Include a dumbbell, a snarling dog with a crown, and some scratchy lightning bolt shapes. Use a thick marker style with sharp edges and attitude. The vibe should feel chaotic and underground. And this is what it gave me. Now before I actually go ahead and show you how to put your brand on these mock-ups, I just want to really shout out today's sponsor, Framer. Now if you are a designer or a creative and still don't have a proper portfolio online, Framer is hands down the best way to build one. You can start free. There are loads of amazing free templates online already on the platform, and it actually feels like your work is coming to life. I even built my own agency's website on Framer. You can take a look in the link in the description. It's clean, fast, built for conversions, and perfectly shows my agency's branding. Now, if you want to get started today and use the code Jack Watson, that's gonna get you 25% off your first three months with Framer if you decide to purchase a plan. Okay, so let's do a live run through now. I've got Photoshop open. I'm gonna show you how I've put the TVG brand in onto this mock-up that I've generated on Midjourney. Now, when you actually generate your product photos, they're most likely going to look something like this. And there's a way you can get around this inside of Photoshop. All that we need to do is click the selection tool here, drag over the sides, and we can now expand this to whatever size that we want by clicking generative fill here. You probably already know this. Yeah, so I think we're gonna go for this one. That's fine. And now we need to put the pattern, which is going to be this pattern here, onto the bag. As you can see, all we've got, normal pattern, it's got a white background, and we're going to put this onto this tote bag right here. Now the best way to do this is to start with a simple shape, and we're gonna go for the rectangle tool over here, and we're gonna just draw a rectangle similar size to the bag, like this. That should be about fine to be fair. And then we're gonna click number five on the keyboard. It's gonna reduce the opacity to 50%. Now if we right click the rectangle and click convert to smart object, this is now gonna make sure that we can click into this layer and this is where we're going to be able to put our design onto. So we're just gonna close that for now. Now the next thing that we want to do is actually shape this to the bag. So I'm gonna click our rectangle, which is looking more like a square. And then if I click command and T, 
right click on the square and then click warp. We can now warp this to the shape of the bag. So all I'm gonna do here is zoom in and start to lift it up, move the handles as you would if you were using the pen tool and start to line it up exactly with the bag. So we're just gonna do this. Now you're gonna come across parts like this down here where if you were to just pull these curves in, you're still going to miss part of the bag out. Now the way you get around this is by holding command on your keyboard and this, you can see here, it's gonna bring up two different lines. So if you're more on the right side, you're gonna see a line at the top and on the side. But if you go close to the edge, then you're just gonna see one line. Now we only want one line here, so I'm just gonna click that. And then you can see we can literally bring this right in and adjust the handles so it fits perfect. We hold command down again. We can move this out, reshape it a little bit, which is getting a bit messy. And Adobe Photoshop has a good idea already of how the image should look, which is gonna help us when we're gonna put our layer on next. But we're just gonna add a, a few more of these on here, straighten it out, and then use these handles just to make sure that we've covered the entire bag. What we don't want to happen is this here. As you can see, it's got a bit tangled up, so we're just gonna bring that up slightly so that when we put the pattern on, it's not gonna look scrunched up. Now that's looking good so far. Probably need to bring this out a little bit over here. The more accurate, the better. So we're just gonna bring this in slightly over this side. And that, that's looking pretty much spot on. We're just gonna drag this slightly down at the top. Perfect. So now we've got our shape, that looks good. We're going to click into it and we're going to bring our pattern over. So this pattern I brought from a recent branding project that we've done called TVG. And hang on, I just need to make it slightly bigger. So we're gonna bring it in, hold in option, we're just gonna scale it up. It looks fine, we'll have something like that. And then we're going to delete the first layer and then we're going to click X at the top here and click save. Now you can see it fits well, but it looks awful. So we're gonna change this by heading to our rectangle layer, go into the blending modes, changing it to soft light. And now that looks decent, but we can still do a bit more. What we're going to do here is double click it. And then if we hold option on the keyboard, we can just drag this underlying layer and that's going to allow the shadows to come through the design, which is also going to give it a little bit of a texture feel as well. So we're just going to reduce that and you can see, you can really start to see the highlights of the bag now, rather than just the, the flat design. So I'm just going to drag this until I feel that it looks right, take it a bit left and a bit right, and then do the same with the shadows. And there we have it, straight onto the mock-up. And that's how you do it. So there we go. That's how you get a mock-up from Midjourney or ChatGPT. Take it into Photoshop and apply your brand onto the mock-ups. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. See you in the next one.